So I'm interested in trying to make a sustainable source of omega-3 fish oils. I'd really like to be able to make a, a, a plant-based source of these important fatty acids. Instead of having to take them out of the ocean, we could grow them on the land. Now, omega-3 fish oils are, are actually one of the few nutrients that really have very clear proven benefits for human health and nutrition. It's really important that we get enough omega-3 fish oils in our diet, but we're constrained from doing that because there aren't enough fish in the ocean. So to make a plant-based source of omega-3 fish oils, really the only way to do that is by genetic engineering. So what we had to do was take the genes from the organisms that make omega-3 fish oils, which aren't fish, they're marine microalgae. So we take the genes from the microalgae and put them into the plants. So the plants now have this extra ability to do something that they couldn't do before, which is make omega-3 long chain polyunsaturated fatty acids, which is the long but proper name for omega-3 fish oils. So we've identified all the genes that we needed from the algae. We introduced the genes from the algae into the plants, first as a proof of concept, and then we moved it into a, into a crop plant species called camelina. And we knew from experiments that we did in the glass house several years ago that the, the camelina accumulated the levels of omega-3 fish oils equivalent to what we find in oceanically sourced fish oils. So that was a really big, big breakthrough and that happened about four or five years ago. This plant camelina is a really robust plant. Actually, it's probably the oldest oilseed crop in Europe. Uh, so people, man has been growing camelina since the Bronze Age. So it's really exciting that we can see that the plants work in the field as well as they do in the glass house. So to me, that demonstrates the real power and the potential of this technology. And I think it, it could really revolutionize both how we grow and produce fish uh, and also have an impact on human nutrition. Because we can grow large volumes of the material in the field, we can do fish feeding studies. And the reason we want to do that is because most of the fish oils that are taken out of the ocean are used to feed fish. So there's a sort of a cycle where we're removing stuff from the ocean to put back into the ocean to feed farmed fish. So we're trying to find, we need to really demonstrate the efficacy of those of, of our, of our land-based source of omega-3 fish oils. I think in terms of the technology in general, I think we have with our Camelina system, we've got a, a platform for producing a whole suite of, of different fatty acids. And, and every experiment we do helps us to understand more and more about the metabolism and how best to manipulate it. So maybe in five years, hopefully, we'll be in a position where we can actually produce a designer uh, oil composition in, in our seeds and we could tailor that oil composition to whatever we want to use it for whether it's for direct human nutrition or for animal nutrition or maybe for some other application. The, the beauty of plants is that they are uh, a very green way of producing things metaphorically and literally and so if we're trying to produce things whether it's chemicals or food or feed or whatever we want to do that in the most environmentally sensitive manner possible with the lowest environmental footprint and i think plants and agriculture can really really help us do that whether it's reducing our dependence on petrochemicals or whether it's reducing our dependency on taking things out of the ocean i think there's a real power with the fusing together synthetic biology metabolic engineering and agriculture to come together to produce a new way of doing things in a much more sustainable fashion. Because we've had to do, for example, GM field trials, what's been interesting and exciting about that is that's involved actually a great deal of public engagement and science communication. And it's an opportunity to talk to people about the research we're doing and also help them maybe address some of the concerns they have. To me, what's been really exciting is being able to actually have dialogues with people rather than telling them what they should think or why they should think it to actually ask them well what do you think 